pointers cower in fear it's time my friend we have to dig into this argument pointers are one of the most feared things in the C language but depending on what language you came from you might already understand the concept of references where a variable refers to an object of some type this is essentially the same thing except we have to be more explicit would say about when we are talking about the reference or the thing it refers to. Computer memory holds data of all kinds, right? It will hold floats, ints, or whatever you have. To make memory easy to cope with, each byte of memory is identified by an integer. These integers increase sequentially as you move up through memory. You can think of it as a bunch of numbered boxes, where each box holds a byte of data. Or if you want like a big array, where each element holds a byte. If you come from a language with arrays, the number that represents each box is called its address. Now, not all data types use just a byte. For instance, an int is often four bytes, as is a float, but it really depends on the system. You can use the size of operator to determine how many bytes of memory a certain type uses. Let's make a simple example. So I'm going to declare an integer that I call n and a float that I call f. As you can see, I don't even initialize those values. So inside these variables, I'm going to have garbage values. And I print f the actual size. For that, I need the zu specifier, one for the integer and one for float. Zu because size of operator is going to give me back size t. New line, then comma, and I say size of n comma and size of f like that i do my usual compilation with all the flags so we'll, we'll extra pedantic the standard that is going to be c to x and the input all right i launch and i get four and four this is the size of bytes in my system of an integer and a float now what does it mean that it is system dependent well let me make a very simple example here, this time, I'm going to have a long. And if I compile again, I get 8 and 4, of course. But now we compile for a system with a 32-bit architecture. I can do with the flag M32, like that. Enter. And if I launch again, you will see that this time, a long is going to be 4 bytes. So this is the size of a long in a 32-bit architecture machine. So that's the meaning of this line. An int is often 4 bytes as is a float, but it really depends on the system. So you should never make assumptions about the size of a specific data type. A long can be eight bytes or four bytes, depending on the system. Now, when you have a data type like an integer that uses more than a byte of memory, the bytes that make up the data are always adjacent to one another in memory. Sometimes they are in the order that you expect, and sometimes they're not. While C doesn't guarantee any particular memory order, which is platform dependent, it's still generally possible to write code in a way that's platform independent. Now, in Linux, there is a lscpu, which is a command that is showing you CPU architecture information. And as you can see here at the very top, I get byte order, which is little endian. What does it mean? Well, to make it simple, little endian and big endian are two ways computers store multi-byte data types like integer. A little endian, the least significant byte, namely the smallest part of the data, is stored first, followed by the more significant byte. In big endian, it's the other way around, with the most significant byte stored first. So little endian is like writing numbers from right to left, if you want, while Big Endian is like writing them from left to right. These are just conventions, ways of doing things. There is not a winner, there is not best fit. Anyway, let's move on. It's time for the infamous pointer definition, which is a variable that holds an address. That's basically it. There's not a lot of mystery about pointers. They are the address of data. Just like an integer variable can hold the value 12, a pointer variable can hold the address of data. That's it. Now, all of these things mean the same thing. Index into memory. If you're thinking of memory like a big array, address, location, place in memory, call as you want. All of these are pointers, are points in memory that you can reference. So if we have an integer and we want a pointer to it, 
namely its address, location, position in memory. What we want is some way to get the address of that integer, right? After all, the pointer just holds the address of the data. So what is the operator that we are supposed to use to find the address of that int? Well, in C, we use the address of operator, which happens to be the ampersand. This is the operator to find the address of the data. Now let's get practical again. I declared an integer that I call n, and I want to know the location of this variable. I told you that there is an operator in C, which is the address of. So I'm going to use another specifier, which is p, that stands for pointer, and I'm going to pass as an input the address of n, so the ampersand n, address of n, okay? And here maybe I write the address of n is in this fashion. Usual compilation, and here this time you can see we get a warning because percent p expects argument of type void star. This is a generic pointer in C. So this will work, no problem, but to be pedantic, indeed, we have the flag pedantic. I'm gonna cast this to avoid pointer, like that. We will see about the casts, don't worry. Compile again, and this time no problems, no warnings. And if I launch it, I get the exact address, which is written in hexadecimal, as you can see from the actual prefix, 0x. So this is the location of my variable n in memory, namely, this is the virtual location. What do I mean by that? Well, we have the operating system that is a, a juggler, he is a magician, is doing all the tricks to make your memory bigger than it actually is. But don't worry about that. In your mind, this is the actual position in memory of your variable n. So, very cool. You can now successfully take the address of a variable and print it on the screen. Now the real question, what the freak pointers are good for? Well, to understand that, let's get practical. We're going to store a pointer in a variable so that we can use it later. So I have my usual integer and then I declare a pointer. So pointer declaration. To declare a pointer, you just do the data that is gonna be pointed, in this case an integer, then this asterisk and the name of the actual pointer. I'm gonna say ptr underscore n to say that this is the actual pointer to n. So we have here a variable that is a pointer type and can point to other integers. We know that points to integers since it's of type int star, int asterisk, call as you want. Now we are gonna initialize this n with the value 42, like always, and we are gonna also initialize this pointer with the address of n, right? Ampersand n in this fashion. So when we do assignment into a pointer variable, the type of the right hand side of the assignment has to be the same type of the pointer variable. Indeed, in our case, we have an int star, an int pointer, and here we have the address of an actual integer. So when this expression is going to be evaluated, we're going to get a pointer to an integer, which matches exactly with this type int star. So to be a little technical, we have on the left side of the assignment, a variable of type pointer to int, int star. And on the right side, we have an expression of type pointer to int. So as you can see, this one is an expression, expression of type pointer to int, variable of type pointer to int. You probably don't still quite get what is the point of a pointer, right? But we are taking step by step into the actual full comprehension, don't worry. Pointer variable can be thought of as referring to another variable by pointing to it. You will never hear see people talk about referring or references, but this mental model is pretty good because it will help us make sense of the, the reference operator. When you have a pointer to a variable, a reference to a variable, you can use the original variable through the pointer by dereferencing. And here is the magic word, the pointer. Now, what is the meaning of getting access to the original variable? Well, if you have a variable called i and you have a pointer to i called p, you can use the dereferenced pointer p exactly as if it were the original variable i. Okay, you almost have enough knowledge to handle an example. The last bit you need to know is actually this. What is the dereference operator? It is actually called the indirection operator. 
because you're accessing values indirectly via the pointer. And it is the asterisk, again. Now, important, don't get this confused with the asterisk you used in the pointer declaration. They are the same character, but they have different meanings in different contexts. So let's restart from the beginning. I have an integer n, and then I have a pointer to an integer. So int star p t r n, beautiful. This star here is not the, the reference operator. This is just for the declaration of the pointer. Let's move on so you can understand better. It will say n is equal to 42. So I assign the value 42 to the variable. And then I say ptrn is equal to the address of n. Then I say at ptr. So here I dereference this pointer. And basically I'm accessing this variable n, thanks to this address. I put the value here 1337, okay? Now, to check what we have done, I just use a printf to print the value of n two times. It's gonna be before the dereference and after. Okay, as always, let's compile and then launch it. As you can see, I get a before of 42 and an after of 1337. I've managed to access the variable n through its address, thanks to the dereference operator. This line is essentially like saying n is equal to 1337. Exactly the same. Now, if I comment this and I compile, of course I'm gonna get a warning because I have a, an unused uh, variable, but that's not a problem. I launch and I get the exact same result as before, right? So as you can see, this indirection operator tells the computer to use this ptrn, which is just an address, as a pointer, as a reference. So I'm dereferencing this pointer. So this star ptrn is exactly like writing n. I hope this is clear. Right now, you're probably thinking that you have an awful lot of knowledge about pointers, but absolutely zero application, right? I mean, why do you need this ptrn? Well, you can simply use n directly. Well, my friend, the real power of pointers comes into play when you start passing them to functions. Now, you might recall from before that you could pass all kinds of arguments to functions and they would be dutifully copied into parameters. And then you could manipulate local copies of those variables from within the function. And then you could return a single value. What if you want to bring more than one single piece of data. I mean, you can only return one thing, don't you? What happens when you pass a pointer as an argument to a function? Does a copy of the pointer get put into its corresponding parameter? Oh my friend, you bet your sweet peas it does. But what is the clever part here? Well, we set up a pointer to point to our variable in advance, and then the function can dereference its copy of the pointer to get back to the original variable. That's the thing. The function cannot see the variable itself because everything is just a copy, right? When you pass to a function, but it can certainly do reference a pointer to the variable, to the original one. This is analogous to writing a home address on a piece of paper and then copying that onto another piece of paper. You now have two pointers to that house, right? Two references, two addresses, two indexes, call this you want. And both are equally good at getting you to the house itself not to a copy of the house. Now let's make a, a clear example so you can understand the gibberish I'm talking about. Let's create here uh, a function. The function is not returning anything, so void. The function is adding one to an integer, so I call it plus one. And it takes as an input, this time, a reference, an index, a pointer, my friend. How do I say that? Well, it's taking a pointer to an integer. So I have to say int star right and here i can say ptr good now let's write into the body of the function i have a copy of the address right which is this ptr now i have to dereference right i want to access the actual thing the actual integer because this is an int star pointed by this address so what do i do i simply say at this is the dereference operator ptr and I have to increment by one. So what do I do? I say plus plus, right? Like that, semicolon. This is the actual command. So this is my function plus one. What do I do here? I simply call this function, say plus one, 
and I have to pass the actual address. So I pass PTR N like that. And then I simply print the value to see if everything works accordingly in this fashion. So I'm gonna print N. Let's compile. And here I get a mistake. This is a tricky mistake I want you to see. Uh, the problem is that the postfix increment has major precedence than the dereference operator. Just look for C operator precedence online and you will see that the postfix operator has major precedence than the actual indirection dereference operator. So very simply, what do we have to do here? We have to use braces to increase the precedence of the actual dereferencing. So you understand what is going on here is written at PTR. So this is basically becoming this variable, right? I have access to this variable, which is inside the main function. Let's try to compile now, everything works. And the result is gonna be, of course, 43. Now, this can be kind of confusing. For this reason, I highly suggest to you this website. You just type C Tutor online and you will get this. So you can have a visual understanding of what is going on. So to understand this point, you need to understand the stack discipline, namely that every function has its own activation frame and that every activation frame or activation record as its own scope. Namely, here we have the main function, right? With its internal local variables, n and ptr n, which is a pointer. Now we run the code, we click next, and we get n equal 42 and ptr n, which is a pointer to n. As you can see, we have a very good visual representation, right? We see the actual arrow. Then we call the function plus one. So we get an activation record in the stack, which is allocated, boom. You can see the actual square box. You can think indeed of a function as a box that contains stuff. So now main is waiting idle in the stack. As you can see, the stack grows from top to bottom counterintuitively, but this is how it works. And the function plus one as a pointer, as a reference to the actual variable, which is found in the main function frame, you see? So the instruction is at PTR, right? So you can see that here I have the function frame that is accessing exactly this variable in the main function. And I say plus plus, so it's gonna increase. You see, I got increased the value. Now we get a deallocation of this function frame because we reached the final curly brace. So next, the allocation, we go back in mainland and we print the value and we get 43. So this is the power of pointers. I can access stuff which is found in other places, in another function in this case, right? Because the variable n is found inside the main function. It is a local variable. So highly, highly suggest this website play around with this.